Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Here we've got a pair of running backs. We're hoping their number will be called plenty in today's game. It's Latavius Murray's Vikings going up against Stewart's Panthers. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And we welcome all of our viewers inside a place that the folks around here like to call the Vault. And that's Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Just a few moments ago, this building was shaking as the Carolina Panthers emerged from the tunnel here in Charlotte. They are ready to go as the Panthers are set to match up with the Minnesota Vikings. Hi again, folks. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And as we all know, Charles, offenses today, they're driven by the passing attack. But Larry highlighted in the open a couple of running backs who might just disagree with that assessment. Yeah, and sometimes, occasionally, you get a game where running backs will match each other, kind of carry for carry on opposite teams. But for the most part, they focus on themselves. How many touches will they get? And can they create big plays for their own team? And both of these guys, certainly more than five, 10 touchbacks. They're workhorses. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19 yard line. Cam Newton, he is ready to lead out the Panthers' offense. Hey, don't look now. They're 8 and 3, four game win streak. Interesting, though, in their win last week over the Jets, Charles. Cam Newton just 11 for 28, but they got the job done. Yeah, there's discussion. Maybe he had hurt the thumb on his throwing hand, and that might have affected things, but it really didn't matter because they found a way to work around it. And not only that, they get big plays from their defense. Luke Keekley returned a fumble for a touchdown. And then Kalen Clay returned a punt for a touchdown. That made up for some of the lack of offense the Panthers had. But you and I both know one thing. When Cam Newton is right, oh boy, it's magical. They go play action here on first down. Oh, he's got some breathing room. Call it a gain of three. And it'll be a second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Now it's second and seven. Carry for Jonathan Stewart. Looking to find a lane, but he can't reined in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. And a look at the Vikings defensive unit. Let's take a second here to talk about cornerback Xavier Rhodes. And what I love about his game, his long arms and strong hands. When you put him in press coverage, it's really hard for receivers to get off the line of scrimmage and get into their routes. Had what most thought was his best year in 2016. The trophy case agrees, his first Pro Bowl. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Out of the gun, Newton. And that is incomplete. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Now a man who subbed in for Andy Lee down the stretch last year, Michael Pilardi, to kick it away. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. too far from breaking that officially give him 15 and the Vikings will take over here first and 10 Case Keenum takes the field he and the Vikings well they're they're hot they're really hot and Case Keenum keeps working his magic doesn't he arms legs he threw two touchdown passes ran another one in he's getting it done Threw for 282 yards people keep wanting to question Case Keenum keep saying is Teddy Bridgewater going to play the answer right now is no. Case Keenum is their quarterback. I think they're going to ride him throughout the playoffs. Go on, go on, go on, go on. 
Now a play fake here on first down. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Fresh set of downs here. Penalty, it's Murray. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Well, let's take a look here at the offense for Minnesota. When I see Latavius Murray with the ball in his hands, I think that he's a dangerous player. He has good speed, good presence to run inside, nice toughness, and good vision that once he gets past the first line of defense, he can make a guy miss and turn it into a bigger game. Second down run for Murray. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. And the starting crew defensively for Carolina. It's really easy to characterize Thomas Davis as a tough guy. Played with a broken arm in the Super Bowl. Came back from three ACL surgeries, something no NFL player has ever done. But as he told me, I don't want my career defined by coming back from injuries. So let's look at it this way. An attack player on defense, also able to cover in the secondary as he did in college when he was a safety. One of the best all-around linebackers in the NFL, back-to-back -back Pro Bowls. They fake the handoff. Now Keenum. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. They came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. From the left hash, this from 39. And Forbath will put this one through, and the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. So a good kick there, and they wrap up the drive by putting three on the board. And you know, let's face it, you're not always going to come away with six. Defense in the NFL are just too good. But you've got to come away with something. And there, they get three. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Here are the Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. 
and let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> They'll start the drive with a run by Stewart. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, you have to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. They keep it on the ground again to Stewart. And he'll be taken down right around the 27. It'll be a five-yard pickup there. So from second and 13, they're back to a more manageable third and eight. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. A shotgun snap for Newton. And this is going to be incomplete. So much of this game is focus and concentration. And whenever I see guys running the in route, I know that in the back of their mind, they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big head on them as they try and catch the ball. Here's Michael Pilardi now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Sherrill's to return it. Shifts by him. 12 yards on the return that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. See if they stay on the ground for second down. A shotgun snap for Keenum. And complete right side to tight end Rudolph. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, it's Murray. 
And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. You and I both know that you don't really truly replace Adrian Peterson, but Latavius Murray is a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him, upright with some power. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Play action. It's Keenum. Over the middle complete. That's Bell. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 15 yards through the air and a first down. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. Now the Georgia Southern man, this is Jarek McKinnon. And he's not even able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now there's also a flag down, and it's in the area of holding. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. The penalty really backs up the offense here on first down. Now 20 yards to go. Keenum. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16 yard line. 17 yards to pick up there. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. to the ground game. Here's Murray. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Now they'll run. Murray. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Latavius Murray taking it in from a yard out. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. Solid job up front, really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run, end result, six points. Touchdown. Kai Forbath on for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it culminates with a Latavius Murray touchdown run.
Forbath out to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And onto the field, here come the Panthers. And this is their third drive right now, maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. down it's Newton and his throw is going to be incomplete well too much oomph too much mustard there on that pass they yeah, really turned it loose didn't they really cut loose with that one sharp strong didn't lead to a completion though made it very difficult Second down, they run with Stewart. And he'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes, the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there, about to break a big one. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Stewart stops shy of the 45. Showed off a nice little move on the play, though. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Now it's Newton. He can't bring him down. The weight room does work. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Yeah, the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. Now Newton. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there and they were able to successfully complete that one. And now a first down following that long gain. Strong left, strong left. Strong left. Strong left. Strong left. Strong left. 
first carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. They stay on the ground. This time it's Stewart. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Back-to-back -back stops make it third and ten. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just big, a big man, big, a huge boy. man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> and he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. So they'll get themselves a little extra time here to think about what to do on fourth down as we're through with one. Plenty of scoring here already. We're back to Uptown Charlotte after this timeout. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. And the first play will be a field goal try. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. And out now come the Vikings. They're starting to pull away with this one. Early on that first quarter, they didn't look so great offensively. What has changed? Sometimes it's just a matter of doing what you plan to do better. Sometimes you just put that all together and you execute. Other times it's just in a simple adjustment in your game plan, finding a spot that maybe was a little weaker than maybe you thought, and going to that. So many different things, so many different ways, but right now, you got to like what they're doing. They have put distance between themselves and their opponent. Looking to add on here in the second quarter. Hang on now. Green, 39. Ah. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Big boys down there in the trenches in a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. <laughs> and what a big time play there. Hurry up, here we go. Hurry up. They go with Murray again. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Right, here we go. Three, 19. Now a play fake, and it's Keenum. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. And Quigley now on to punt as he sends this one away. 
And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now a first down throw for Newton. And caught left side, Olsen. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. The Panthers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and five. From the gun, here's Newton. Over the middle, it's complete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. It's a pickup of 16 there that will lead to a new set of downs. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. Newton on first down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. That pass going awry gives me time for a sidebar. Julio Jones on Sunday, Charles. 253 yards, two touchdowns. You know what amazed me about that, though? What's that? That's his third best game in his career yardage watch. Third best? Yeah. Didn't you say he had 253 yards? <laughs> yeah. Because you remember last year, the 300 game, he also had 259 back in 2014. That's right. The 300 game came against Carolina with those rookie cornerbacks, and they had to grow up in a hurry. That was a tough day for them. But there was one other oddity to his game on Sunday. What? Uh, one of the passes he caught for a touchdown was not from Matt Ryan. It's from Mohamed Sanu. How about that? What a day. Julio Jones continues to provide for the Falcons. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Throwing on third down. Newton. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Here's Stephon Diggs as he and the rest of the offense get ready to go again. Second quarter here, he has only one catch, but they have the lead. you got to think, though, he's going to be more involved at some point. That's what you would expect, but sometimes what defenses do to take away a player of his magnitude, it costs them in other areas. And right now, with them losing, they may have to change their focus, and maybe he will open up a little bit more as the game goes on. Yeah, well, so far, just the single catch. He's taken down at the 23. 
Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Two tight ends in the formation on that one. It looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield. I think he was just planning on going over the middle. That's what he did. Picked up first down, too. So when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. The Vikings on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and three. McKinnon. And just a short game that time as they're able to get him down. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation. And I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed. But the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Jonathan Stewart now gearing up to go on offense as he takes the field. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense is doing a nice job against him today. When it's all said and done, it's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to get it done better going forward. We'll see if he can look and do some soul searching now. This is Stewart on first. There goes Jonathan Stewart. And they will finally catch him, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. A great run that time by Stewart. 72 yards. Well, 
They'll try to run with McCaffrey. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. Here's Newton now on second down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The tight end, Ed Dixon, was the target, and it'll bring up third down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. A big play to start the drive. Got him in this position, but this defense has held firm since, and now it's third and goal. Here's Newton. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers. Devin Funches from six yards away. And the Panthers have got it back to a one-score game. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Graham Gano on for the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. A four-play drive spanning 80 yards. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. Gano out to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Latavius Murray getting set to go again. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't it? He? he has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. down is Keenum and they're able to get this one across the 35 they give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. They go back to Murray on first down. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. 
I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over the top. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Carey's piling up. It's Murray again. And he's brought down. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this. Coming up at halftime, remember, we'll get you out to Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of this first half. That is, of course, unless you decide to skip him. And for the record, we do not encourage that. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They'll try the air now with Keenum. A dump down to McKinnon. And he's going to be out of bounds down to the 25. 11 more on that one and another first down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. All right, here we go. Blue Blue Shotgun snap for Keenan. His throw incomplete. He was looking for Jarius right that time. And that'll bring up second down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. And here comes play number six on this drive. Here we go now. Green, 39. Back to the air on second down. It's Keenum. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll make it third down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. All right, here we go. Throwing on third down, Keenum. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Hey, we talked about Adam Thielen a little bit last year, didn't we? Possession receiver, makes some tough catches, gets it done, and he's a homeboy. <laughs> Grew up very close to the Twin Cities. And showing those possession receiver skills right there to pick up the first. zone now Keenum it's caught in the end zone touchdown Minnesota Blake Bell a 14 yard touchdown and the Vikings are going to add on to their lead they went empty backfield all their weapons out wide so there, were, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do no secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They manage to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. It's good to make it 17-7. That time, a nine-play drive, and it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota.
Forbath out to kick this one away. Fozzie Whitaker now on the return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And the Panthers coming out now. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. First down. That incomplete there almost picked off. That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with. But it's second down. A little bit of a window here, and let's use it to give some love to the kickers because we don't do this much. You know, Phil Dawson, 42 years young, hit a 57-yarder to win the game for Arizona last week. How about that? How pumped is he? And that was the first win for Arizona over a team with a winning record mm -hmm. in 2017, making that kick even bigger. But how about his counterpart in Pittsburgh? Chris Boswell, a night game in Pittsburgh. Heinz Field has been notoriously a tough kicker's park. He hits a 53-yarder to beat Green Bay at the buzzer. And I believe that was his career long as well. It was, and it was cold. That's not an easy kick, but he got it done. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. The Panthers on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and six. Operating from the gun, Newton. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Michael Pilardi now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Great starting field position here for the offense. Here we go. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction defense. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. From 
the gun. It's Keenum. Left side caught by Diggs. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Now the offense lining up first and ten. From the gun, here's Keenum. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Latavius Murray, the intended receiver out of the backfield. And that'll bring up second down. Charles, I want to slip in some playoff picture talk here. AFC side, you got the Patriots and Steelers. They seem to be clear at the top. It gets pretty muddled after that, doesn't it? It certainly does. And we talked last week about the AFC West. Remember the beginning of the season? Seemed like the best division in football. Maybe three teams could go to the playoffs. Well, it's no longer the best division in football, but it's still going to be a heck of a race for who's going to win it because Kansas City leads at 6-5, and five, but no one's hotter than the Los Angeles Chargers right now. The last two weeks, they've just dismantled teams. And the Oakland Raiders are just a game out, despite the fact they haven't had their best season. So the AFC West, they're not going to get three in. They're probably going to get one, but what a race for that one. The Vikings on third down, two for five to this point. This will be third and six. Here we go now. Green, 39. Here's McKinnon. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. handoff it's Murray not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30 give him three on first down it'll set up a second and seven some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day so we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room as we send you down to Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Panthers haven't played their best football and trail because of it. The Vikings have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. All right, let's get it going. Here's the first half highlights. Vikings have it midway through one. Keenum's going to complete the pass, and he'll be tackled at the 16-yard line. Vikings now later on the drive. Murray's is going to cruise off the right side, and he'll end up sprinting into the end zone as they go out in front, 10-0. Panthers with the ball midway through the second. Stewart's got nothing but space here. He'll pick up more than 50 yards on the play. Panthers still on the field. Newton's got the completion here, and it ends up working for a touchdown, cutting the deficit to three. Nelson late in the second. 
Keenum's gonna find his mark, and he kept off the long drive with the TD. Vikings push the lead to 10. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on Here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. On first down, it's Keenum. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Morgan. And he's going to be shoved down pretty hard at the 29. That throw good for four. It's second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. A 20th carry coming up now for Murray. Murray with a nice move. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here at a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it that's going to be 15 yards. So here we go, first and ten now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Here's Keenum now on second down. And this one is incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver, and it's third down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah, what happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. They run it with McKinnon. A gain of eight and a first down. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down.
And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They keep it on the ground, but this time it's Murray. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives them a first and goal. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. First down. And that'll be caught by Diggs for a Minnesota touchdown. Stephon Diggs from three yards out. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, you know, the second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. And this one through the uprights and good. A drive that time of six plays, and it's polished off by a Viking score. Forbath out to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. fake here on first down and his throw here is incomplete and we got a second here let's look at the playoff picture in the NFC Charles what's interesting is you've got three teams from the NFC South that would be in right now if the season ended today but they're not the top team no they're not the top team because the top team is unquestionably in my mind the Philadelphia Eagles at 10 and 1 doing it on both sides of the ball, special teams. I think they can play any style of game any team wants to present. But when you start jumbling up everyone else, this is going to be fun over the next few weeks because they're all going to essentially play each other. You mentioned the NFC South. All those teams have to do battle. This is going to be a lot of fun. In fact, I think the Panthers end up going to the Saints in a week or two. So this is going to be crazy. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Man. These guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. They go back to Stewart on first. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Ready. 
Newton turns and hands to Stewart. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long. And that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. The Panthers on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and eight. This is Newton off the play fake to McCaffrey. And he finds a man. It's Olsen. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. We've been together a little while now, partner. How often do we actually describe tight ends as nifty? Because that's what I think of when I see Greg Olson on the field. His ability to run routes, create space and separation, and make those catches downfield. Sure consistent. The numbers the last couple years almost identical and both over 1,000-yard seasons. So the offense has it first and 10. A shotgun snap for Newton. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. And now the offense operates in the red zone. Stewart on first down. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there. Second down. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. To throw on second down is Newton. And he will score. Touchdown, Panthers. Cam Newton, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Panthers are able to cut into this lead. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Gano now to add the extra point. It's up and good, so they claw back into it. 24-14 now. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And Cam able to take it himself in for the score. to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. They were able to extend their lead with an opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter, but that just got matched a moment ago. So we know that what they discussed at the half worked. Now, what are the counters to that, right? You don't just run the same things over and over. Some do, but many will also show something and then come back with something else to keep the defense off balance.
first and ten. Keenum. And an alley to run. Space to maneuver at the 40. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. comes to the line now first and ten to throw it's Keenum and he'll find Thielen on the right side it's a loss of five there bringing up second well that wasn't exactly a thing of beauty I know they completed the pass but look at the yardage lost I mean who does that make happy? That's why I don't play in PPR points per reception fantasy <laughs> leagues right there. You'd be really you don't deserve upset, anything right? for that. But you get credit for it? Is yeah. that how that works? Yeah. Well, I know whoever has this team's defense, they were happy about that play. To throw on second down is Keenum. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. The Vikings on third down. They've hit four of seven. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Now McKinnon, and he lost the football. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Fresh set of downs here. Here we go now. Boom, now. Now a handoff here to his running back. Oh, good move. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Like, it's lost. You can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. A shotgun snap for Keenum. That's complete. It's Bell. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now. So it'll be first down here after the run. Now again, this is Murray. 
And he's going to find his way forward here for a modest gain. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. So they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. From the gun on third down, Keenum. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Jarek McKinnon, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. A 10-play drive that time. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Forbath out to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offense's sails because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. And an alley to run. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. at a good spot here, second and two. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Panthers in possession of the football, but facing a deficit here as we get to the fourth and final quarter of play. On 
second down. Here's Newton. They'll set up the screen for Stewart. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, that all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now a first down throw for Newton. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags. And I believe this is going to be a first down. Personal foul. Face mask. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. that one for 14 yards and another first. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. It'll be a gain of four, and it'll make it second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Now whistles. Flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. That's going to set him back five yards. bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. To the air again, Newton. And an alley to run. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a third and one. The Panthers on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll try and run it. Here's Stewart. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance, but a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? And here we 
go on first and goal. Now whistles. Flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. So that'll back him up five. And here comes play number six on this drive. McCaffrey following the penalty. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. But at least he was able to break that initial contact, or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. Second and goal. Defense digging in again here. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Well, they got to have six here. It's third and goal. Now whistles. Flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. offense. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. They gotta have six here. It's third and goal. Here's Newton. And that one's going to be over everybody in the back of the end zone. It's incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. right through and that will close the gap down to 14 all right so it's getting late in this one now you could argue that they needed to get back within two scores and they did indeed do that but they still face a pretty uphill battle yeah even with the field goal here it's going to take two fourth quarter touchdowns now to get back in it and that's going to be a tall order against this defense After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. Fielded about a yard deep. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And our attention here turns to Latavius Murray. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're back, because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. 
Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, this is by Thema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. On play action, it's Keenum. Looking deep downfield. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. The Vikings on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and 11. Working from the gun, Keenum. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. He's just not at his focus in this game. It's not one drop. It's not two. That's three for this contest. Yeah, uncharacteristic for any NFL receiver, and he's no exception. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. Four on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe> bash. <laughs> I don't know about toe that. Bash, <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> First and ten, Newton. <laughs> Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. And on second and ten now. From the gun, here's Newton. And some room to work. And he slides to avoid the hit. Call it a pickup of seven. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. The Panthers on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This time it's third and three. Out of the gun, Newton. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. Partner, we always talk about possessions being at a premium in these games. And now in this situation, Throwing an interception here when you have to claw your way back in, that one's going to hurt, and in a big way. And now out comes Minnesota. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Down, Murray. 
And a short gain there down to the 37 yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there and it'll bring up a second and nine. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. It's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. The Vikings on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This is third and four. Out of the gun, Keenum. And he's able to find Diggs. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Murray and he'll keep it moving down to the 15 yard line nine yards is the pick up there and they'll have a second and one. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players isn't it tough hard gritty run got behind his pads bowled over a few people look at that one right up the gut so up through three quarters no reason to lighten up now and the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Here we go now. Again, it's Murray. Officially, it's no gain on the play, and they'll remain a few inches shy of a first with third down looming. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. All right, here we go. Hey, hey. They'll run here. It's Murray. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play. And that's going to lead them to fourth down. And there's a nice stop for the defense. They've had a tough time containing this guy all game long, but maybe they can build a little bit off of that play, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum. Yeah, every now and then you can actually tackle that guy. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And Forbath will put this one through, and that'll push the lead up to 17. And you figure with that, this game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point, being three scores down. I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. Cam Newton getting ready to go again on offense. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had a victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one, but... Let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. Hey, hey, Roger, Roger. Set. 
Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Call it a gain of five. And it'll make it a second down. Second and five. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Here's Newton now on second down. He's got his man on the crossing route. And that is what you call a hit stick. Put down to the ground hard, right near the 39. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to Talk to your other coverage guys and let him know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. And the tight end Olsen, right side. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Just two yards to go here on second down for the offense. From the gun, Newton. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Third and two, Newton completes it to Dixon. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. They go play action here on first down. And this one complete right side to Funches. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. From the red zone now, Newton. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. You gotta be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there threw it behind him. So second and ten here. To throw again. Newton. A dump off here to Stewart. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down at the 11 yard line. Five yards on the pickup and it'll be third down. Again, Newton. Cam fighting. He lost the football. It's out. And this belongs to the Vikings. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. 
but it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the yeah, fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. Minnesota and last time able to get three it's not what they wanted they wanted six but they got at least something they mustered something out of the drive they'll take it just I, I like the way you've described it not ideal but they'll take it anything to put some points on the board but this time on offense they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone Yeah, they'll be going for six This is Murray looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Play was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. That was second down run for Murray. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. Well, I know at points of this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard, you're a defensive guy, but it was a fun little track meet, wasn't it? It was, and you know the people who really enjoyed this game? They're the ones that like going to batting practice at the Major League Baseball <laughs> parks, right? Seeing the 14 to 11 game, that sort of deal, that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. Till next time, we say so long.